Hello, everybody. I must say, uh, it is quite the ride. I just came from 14 degrees of Fahrenheit up to 80 this morning, straight from Davos, from the World Economic Forum, where I can tell you quantum is something in many stages they are talking about. Many panels are about quantum. And this is why we at Uptown Basel are tagging in to this world. Imagine you've got the diagnosis cancer and your doctor knows exactly what treatment could help you. Imagine you've got the neural disease and the doctor can predict it earlier or with a higher precision, precision reduction, the severity, or perhaps it won't even occur. Imagine drugs that can be developed faster. Today, we only know 10 high seven molecules in the body. And this is the only what we use. But we do know that 10 high 60 molecules are pharmaceutically efficient. Imagine if quantum computer would optimize the routes of the airplanes, the speed, so that the climate will be health, healthier as well. With this thing only, you can save 2% of CO2 pollution worldwide. Imagine if you will save another 2% if you could optimize the production of ammonium, like with the Haber-Bosch process, where with quantum, you can have better processes. Imagine blockchain prominence lets us trace where exactly food is coming from, not just from what farm, but also what fertilizer were used, perhaps even from what cow, crop, everything. Imagine a world where CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, fundamentally change the structure of the financial system, altering the role of responsibilities between the private sector and the central bank. Imagine if these widely available CBDCs, which could serve as a close substitute for commercial big money, all that, and I was very pleased to see all these examples brought with passion from <laughs> Masayuku just now, that all these examples in many more industry which you represent here are possible. And no, I don't want to start again what the differentiation between quantum computer and the classic computer is. But we do know that as soon as the quantum advantage is here, industries have to run because those who aren't prepared by then will be too late. In quantum it said, if you arrive early, you're on time. If you arrive on time, you already are late. And we know that we are in this noisy intermediate scale quantum area and this NISC. The question is, how long does it take until this quantum advantage is definitely here? What we do know at Uptown Basel is that the way there is long, but we are ready to go. We already started. And we already started not just with quantum, we already started with hybrid because the near future is hybrid. You can't just do everything on quantum. You have to look what kind of the problem can be better solved with Manila or with another quantum computer and what kind with a classical computer. And perhaps you also have to simulate some of the quantum computers for when the noisy intermediate scale quantum area is over. So you can use already simulations. And this is what we want to do. This is what we are ready to go for. But I want to also tackle another problem. A problem which many of us perhaps aren't aware yet. It's the Y2Q. The difference between Y2Q and Y2K is that at Y2K, we at least knew the exact date. 
But as Stephen Witt said, that the Y2Q is coming. And the National Institute for Standardization and Technology here in the US predict that by the end of this decade already, it's their quote, not mine, the 2048 RSA encryption could be already calculated. So some said you would need 100 million qubits, addressable qubits, before this can occur. Other, like NIST says, it will happen already by the end of this decade. And so, on the way there, NIST said that there will be four new standards for post-quantum encryption. They already have been declared. And these four new standards are now in pace. And the regulators started to think about now how to implement these standards. And here in the US, the government does not want to wait. The agencies here are asked to tell the government how they will implement those standards. And they have already to come with a solution by May 4th of this year. Why, is, why this hurry? If you now hear that perhaps it will be happening by the end of decade, why this hurry? There are three reasons. First of all, Declaring a standard is one thing, but we all know when RSA encryption was announced as a standard, it took 10 up to 20 years be before it became a de facto standard. So if you declare a standard now, it will take 10 up to 20 years. Secondly, if you want to update the operating systems of the devices, with this new kind of standards, with this new kind of encryption standards. In US alone, it's said that there are about 27 billion devices which have to be updated. This takes long. That's a big project. And thirdly, when you have this, then it will take you again very long time until you get all these uh, all these uh, devices it will get you all uh, the standards and until you then really can compute with all these new standards in all these new applications i don't want to go into the details about these new standards but i want to show you how quantum computing can help to make quantum safe cryptography. One is quantum key distribution, which is based on quantum mechanics. So on quantum mechanics, the advantage is, is that if you want to exchange secure data, it can be detected if a third party eavesdrop in exchange. With the quantum mechanics, however, if you take the quantum mechanics in conjunction with blockchain, you can avoid that. But you can also go for quantum physics because when you look how data is transported from A to B, it is usually over, uh, over photons uh, or through optical cables. Now, when using quantum mechanics, these photons, this optical light, will have the so-called superposition in between zero and one. And as soon as somebody wants to listen to what you are transmitting, it collapses into the original state of zero or one. So you know at the end if somebody is listening or not. And these kind of principles with blockchain, these kind of principles with quantum, is what we can use for, to solve these problems which I started my presentation with, the problems where you can imagine what is possible. And this is exactly our mission at Quantum Basel. If you look at sensors which can get more precise and sensible, like discovery of cancer cells in the blood, then this would be something great to follow up on. If you look at the perspectives of computing, you know that there are different kinds of quantum computers how are they 
how is the research done on them? What are the proceedings? What is uh, here by the end of this year? Is it the 7,000? Is it the 9,000 next year? I don't know. In other, in other computers, it's the 128, followed by the 433. It reminds me of the 90s when we had the 286 computer, then the 386, the 400, the Pentium. This is exactly where we are. But you have to follow up on all these different routes. The perspective in silica trials, I do not know if you are aware, but we saw one slide before. Uh, it, I think it was Brian, uh, his name, who showed us the drug development process. And within this drug development process, two years are used for animal research. Now, it is a big dream, but once biochemical processes un are understood, it can be a mission to abolish animal testing. And end of December, the Congress here in the US passed an act, and it's called the FDA Modernization Act 2.0. Within this FDA Modernization Act, who was signed by Joe Biden just a couple of weeks ago, it said that now it is allowed to simulate or to use advanced technologies like AI or big data or similar something like quantum computing to simulate those processes within the drug development. That means that it isn't necessary anymore for drug development and is accepted also for drug development not to test with animals. This is, by the way, why we do have FDA offices as well on site in Basel. I come back to that. Now, genomics is one big thing, but I want to also tackle the protein folding, where we saw before this beautiful example where a small protein from 1910s, I think it was the drug, up to the, to the beast, <laughs> which we can't simulate anymore. But if we can understand how a protein is folded, how the structure of a protein is, if then by understanding it, we can simulate it. And this brings us then to personalized medicine. And this is our aim at Uptown Basel. I work a lot in Silicon Valley, roughly 20% of my time. So you know there's only one more thing. And this one more thing is our climate. Our climate, which, again, many things can be optimized. We heard about those processes. And many things of those optimization can help our climate to become healthier as well. So what is quantum Basel? What is Uptown Basel Infinity? You see here a picture of Basel in Switzerland. In the back, right in the north, is Germany. A little bit on your left is France. So we are in the middle, in the triangle of those three cities. You see the new Roche Towers here in the back. And this isn't built yet. Some of the buildings are already here, some ain't. But this in the middle will be our high performance technology centers with Uptown Basel Infinity, the company I'm heading. We are an innovation campus who is completely privately funded. The investor, Thomas Stehelin and his wife, gave us half a billion Swiss francs to start with to see something happening in Switzerland in an innovation campus. And if you think, well, this is an entrepreneurial spirit, I can tell you we are used for these kind of entrepreneurial spirits because the chimney you see here in the back is the first chimney where two engineers came together more than 100 years ago and they founded Brown Bavarian Company on this very site. So today's ABB, we say that ABB is called Arlsheim by Basel, because our innovation campus is in Arlsheim. But this is a sideshow. So this is Thomas Sterling, and he does not want to do his 
this half billion investment for himself, not even for his kids, but for his grandkids and to give something back to the economy of Switzerland and to give something back to the perhaps even more than just Switzerland. So this is where we started five, six years ago. This is where we are heading to. And now I'm coming back to the High Performance Technology Center, which I showed you right at the beginning. This is our quantum computing center. In here, we will have, from March onwards this year, offices for the FDA, as when you are working together with companies in drug development, it's always good to have the regulator on board. We also have a oper fully operating, secure operating center for data security. And as you may understand now, why for us quantum safe encryption is very important as well. Overall, we are not just serving life science. We are tackling three different industries. Life science, yes, we are in Basel, so there are companies like Roche, Novartis, and more. Logistics, as well. And as we already heard from yesterday and today, there are many optimization problems you can tackle within the logistics. And industrial production. One of our tenants on site is Straumann. Straumann is the only company worldwide 3D printing dental implants, whole chores, and they are doing this here on our site as well. So this kind, these are the three industries we are tackling. And what do these industries have in common? They are data heavy. Being data heavy means that when you want to work with big data, you have to structure it. So artificial intelligence is a good way to start with. But you also need strong processors. So if you want to talk about computing power of within a decade, you have to talk about quantum computing. This is why we have data and analytics teams. Advanced manufacturing, I already told you about the example with 3D printing and communication, I said as well. Now, if you've got this kind of technology on site, you have to think about ethics, because who has will be able to use this kind of technology. What projects can be conducted for? Regenerative is something very important. Remember the health of our planet. And security, I think I've mentioned a few times already why this is important, especially talking with IoT, with IoT devices. And you remember 27 billions only in US only. At the end, our innovation campus is here dedicated for collaboration, for innovation, and for individualization. Now, this is the goal, and how are we tackling this? You see in the middle our hub, our quantum Basel hub for quantum computing and artificial intelligence. And we started to say, OK, we don't want just to have partnerships or contracts with one quantum company. So we do have superconducting quantum computers um, companies we are collaborating with. We do have quantum annealers, and there we've got D-Wave system, which is definitely the one to go if you want to talk about quantum annealing. And by the way, it's also the way to go, as we heard from many of you before, because with a superconductor, you can realize projects for one up to three years, perhaps five years, perhaps 10 years time. But with the quantum annealer, you can realize projects within a year, two and three. And we heard many of great examples of which, uh, uh, which are here. So beside those kind of contract uh, of uh, 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 quantum computers, and we also have uh, a little bit long term investments in, uh, in spin uh, computers. So uh, we are looking there in this area as well. But we also said, and remember, the world, the future is hybrid for the next uh, couple of years. We also have our own data center. 
where we do have classical computing power and we are also ramping up partnerships with companies like uh, 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 GPU companies like NVIDIA where you can simulate quantum computing but as, you all, as we all know 90% of all artificial intelligence applications run on those kind of GPUs. This is why we do have this on site as well. And then I've talked about AI. We are ramping up here our, uh, our center for artificial intelligence together with big players in the field of artificial intelligence. I don't want to name them at the moment, but uh, with some of them we just had a joint session at the World Economic Forum yesterday. Who are we serving? For sure, our tenants, for sure, companies nearby, like Roche Novartis, but also companies who want to realize their quantum project, their use case with us. We don't just provide the technology, we also provide enablement. Within our partnership with the e -Wave, we do have direct access to their experts. We have our own expert pool where we help those companies to understand what the problems are and to develop those kind of use cases together. We also started to do our own projects, like projects in the field of AI, where we looked how you can use reinforced learning with quantum computing. And our first proof of concept showed that already with a 1717 qubit superconducting computer, you can accelerate reinforced learning by 63%. So talking about big data, talking about artificial intelligence, these are use cases. We are also working on use cases for protein folding, which we want to share with our ecosystem so that they can take them and elaborate on them in the sake of uh, faster drug development. We do have a series of universities we are cooperating with, like the University of Basel, but we also came back just from the MIT and from other universities. We are looking forward for some future work together. By the end of March, we will conduct the US-Swiss scientific conference on quantum computing. We already have speakers from Harvard, Princeton, uh, MIT, University of Chicago, Aragon, Switzerland, ATH, APFL, University of Geneva. We are bringing all those players together. We have been present the day when the memorandum of understanding between US and Switzerland has been signed in terms of collaboration on quantum computing. And we, last week, I've been in Israel where we started uh, another partnership. We are elaborating on it yet uh, with Weizmann Institute, research institutes. So we are really connecting to the world. And it is a coincidence. Over lunch, I was together with somebody here from Miami. And she said, well, you see, there's an Art Miami and there's a Art Basel, and they are connected already. So <laughs> perhaps it isn't an inc coincidence that we as Quantum Basel now are presenting here in Miami as well. But I told you about innovation, and I did not mention the startups yet. We have, with Plug and Play, a Silicon Valley Accelerator. Plug and Play looks at 17,000 startups yearly in 19 different verticals. We brought them to Basel, so they've got their physical presence there. They are looking for quantum startups for us and startups in the field of uh, sustainability. And we are ramping up our own fund where we are funding startups in the field of quantum computing. We do have there our own uh, lawyer services, company building services. This is overall what Quantum Basel represents. Our mission is to abolish animal testing. And we think that with the help of quantum annealers, with the help of D-Wave system, with the help of our partners, technology-wise, but with the help of our collaboration worldwide, 
where we are looking forward to. And I really like to connect with all of you. I'm sorry that I just arrived only today, but we hope that we will go get there. This is Quantum Basel. I'd like to thank you for your attention.